recognise that due to the significant lack of evidence available to the team, we are unable to determine with any certainty the reasons that the aircraft diverted from its far flag planned route. Officials said the latest report is not the final one because the plane remains missing. But that offered little consolation to grieving family members who remain frustrated with gaps in the investigations and the many questions left unanswered. This Beijing man, Jiang Wei, whose mother was one of the passengers on the doomed flight, slammed the report for offering no new evidence nor assigning blame to any party. Although the Malaysian government left the door open to another search, if credible evidence of the plane's location emerges, the chances are slim. That's because this report comes two months after Malaysia pulled the plug on a large-scale, privately funded underwater search for the jet by U.S. outfit Ocean Infinity. Jeff Tang, TVB News. Locally, former lawmaker Lung Kuo Kong faces yet again another court case. He's now been asked to return his wages from before he was ousted from the legislature. Wait. Everyone can choose their pathway. Straight? Or curved? There's no need to follow others. Make your own choice. Vocational and professional education and training covers a wide range of occupations and includes relevant programs up to degree level. It provides practical training to better prepare the younger generation for their future careers and helps them to enter a profession. VPET, leading you to a professional pathway. From the 1st of May 2017, the statute minimum wage is raised to $34.50 per hour. Employees covered by the minimum wage ordinance are entitled to this rate regardless of their mode of employment. Employees with disabilities can opt for assessment and receive wages according to the productivity assessed. For details, please call 2717-1771 or visit the Labor Department website. The vision of Hong Kong 2030 Plus is to make Hong Kong a more livable, competitive and sustainable metropolis. First, eccentric planning for a livable, compact city. Second, diversifying our economy and embracing new challenges. And third, enhancing development and environmental capacity for sustainable growth. One of the deadliest forms of cancer in Hong Kong. As Kena Chu reports, the health department is launching a subsidized screening program starting next Monday. If you're aged to 70, you might be interested in the health department's upcoming colorectal cancer screening program. From Monday, the program's first phase will screen eligible residents born from 1942 to 1957 for colon cancer. Because it is hidden inside your tummy, you don't feel anything. By the time you recognize there are some discomforts, like uh, abdominal swelling or poor appetite or bleeding um, in your stool, then it's already quite advanced. To take part in the program, those eligible must first register on the electronic health recording sharing system and make an appointment with one of the 685 primary care doctors enrolled in the program. After that, they will be subsidized by the government to undergo a fecal occult blood test. If results are positive, subsidies ranging between $280 and $8,500 will be given for further checkups and procedures depending on each patient's condition. The government will set aside uh, $940 million Hong Kong dollars over the coming five years. That number of beneficiaries will be more than three times the current number, increasing from 0.82 million people to 2.55 million people. In a previous pilot scheme, about 70% of the nearly 70,000 participants successfully dodged cancerous changes in their colons. The new program is expected to prevent some 650 cancer occurrences and 6,500 adenoma cases annually in the coming five years. Kena Chu, TVB News. Those who have applied to purchase a second-hand HOS flight should check their numbers as the ballot for eligible buyers came out today. Caleb Thorne reports. And the numbers are out. There are 36, 70, 71, 30, 
Britain has pushed a strong message to Chinese companies that it is fully open for business as it prepares to leave the European Union next year. Hunt also urged China to respect the Joint Declaration, a treaty signed between London and Beijing on how Hong Kong should be governed after the handover. Wang says Beijing is committed to maintaining Hong Kong's one country, two systems principle and told Hunt that the SAR is an internal matter for China. In Indonesia, hundreds of stranded hikers are making their way to safer ground. Hundreds were stranded after a 6.4 magnitude quake left them on top of Mount Rinjani. The tremor closed off a route up to the peak on the tourist island of Lombok. The group needed to wait until it was cleared. The quake is being blamed for the death of 17 people. Almost 300 aftershocks have been felt since Saturday's initial tremor. Zimbabweans voted in their first election without former President Robert Mugabe on the ballot. Polling stations in Herrera were packed with voters anxious for change. Following years of economic and political paralysis during the nearly four-decade rule of 94-year-old Mugabe, about 5.5 million people are registered to vote in the southern African nation. The two main contenders are 75-year-old President Emerson Nangagwa, a former deputy president who took over from Mugabe last year. The other choice is 40-year-old Nelson Chamisa, a lawyer and pastor who heads the opposition party. Thousands of election monitors have fanned out across the country to observe a process that the opposition says is biased against them, despite assurances that it will be credible. Over in Cambodia, Hun Sen's reign as leader will continue. He was an easy winner in the latest general election, but as Peter Kobeos explains, his victory is being questioned for its credibility. Hun Sen returned to work today. The Prime Minister of Cambodia was the only foreseeable winner in the election. His ruling Cambodian People's Party claimed all 125 parliamentary seats available. The only real challengers were dissolved last year by the Supreme Court. The Cambodian National Rescue Party was found guilty of trying to dissolve the government and watch the election results from overseas. 29 July 2018 marked the death of democracy in Cambodia, a new dark day of its history. It was to be a celebration of democracy where people would have exercised their right to choose their own government. Unfortunately, that choice had already been made for them before polls opened. Those still in the country didn't really discuss the election, but hope the government can help improve the economy. This taxi driver is hoping more foreign investment can lead to more jobs in the country. One job owners did not help with was overseeing the results. International observers from the U.S. and the EU declined to take part in vote counting and believe the result was predetermined. One local observation group was actually overseen by one of Hun Sen's sons. So after Sunday, Hun Sen's grip on power remains secure. His victory means he will rule for another five-year term. The 65-year-old said he wants two more terms. Peter Cobains, TVB News. The publisher of the New York Times said he implored U.S. President Donald Trump at a private White House meeting this month to reconsider his broad attacks on journalists. In a statement, A.G. Salzberger said he decided to comment publicly after Trump revealed details of their off-the-record meeting to his more than 53 million Twitter followers on Sunday. In his tweet, Trump berated the media for putting out vast amounts of fake news. Salzberger added Trump's aides had requested that the July 20th meeting not be made public. He called Trump's anti preface rhetoric not just divisive but increasingly dangerous. And to the weather, isolated showers for Tuesday. Expect a low of 28 and a high of 34 degrees. And that's the news. Good night.